at VMworld 2016, and one of the subjects here is hybrid cloud storage and developing strategy around that. It is evolving from disaster recovery and archive and these secondary storage use cases to a much more broader application of the technology. Joining me on the whiteboard to talk about that is Douglas O'Flaherty. He's with IBM. Douglas, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure today, George. Let's talk about this. Obviously, people look at sort of this cloud storage concept for the three basic reasons you have on the board there, right? Cost, flexibility, and scalability. Uh, talk a little bit about why people are making those decisions. Well, cost is kind of obvious, right? We yeah. are moving a lot of things from a CapEx to an OpEx model. Makes a big difference. And a lot of this is um, getting really big, and that's part of that problem around the scalability. So as you've got more storage, it's more expensive, and we're looking at mixing and, and building portfolios of storage that actually work. So Doug, let's talk about how the cost and flexibility and scalability are, are changing in the environment today. Well, as soon as we've got cloud, it's a commodity choice, and so people are really playing one cloud against another. We've got SoftLayer, we've got Amazon, we've got Azure, and they're really looking at this opportunity to lower their costs by moving things to a, a more of an OpEx model right. and to take advantage of the scalability that these people offer. Okay. And what's been interesting is as we look at the cost, flexibility, and scalability of driving customers there, but it's, we're seeing really good use cases. We're seeing guys like, you know, traditional IT, and you mentioned it at the start, those guys have been using it for, you know, archive. It's a great place where you can take and set something up, store it, and it becomes highly reliable out there in the cloud. You've right. offloaded that reliability question. Once you've got the ability to do flex uh, compute, we make DR part of that as well. Sure. So disaster recovery is now part of the traditional IT model out in the cloud, and, right. and a hybrid cloud, things on-site and off-site, right. and the ability to move yeah, applications. And great use case, because now you're not paying for a building that just sits there for something bad to happen, right? Exactly. Yeah. What's getting more interesting is now we're looking at primary storage, right? Yeah. So we've moved from the secondary storage use cases to something else. Exactly. And this is getting driven probably from two different angles. And one of the key ones is new services. So that new born in the cloud idea, right, yep. is actually starting off with new apps. And we're seeing IoT, and we're seeing lots of data being generated as part of these new services. Yep. And they've got to come back into that infrastructure of the primary storage right, system. Right, feedback in occasionally, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you have, in all this, a real solid grounding of internal IT, internal IP, internal storage, logistics, traditional ERP systems sure. that are clearly on site. And this, when we're talking about our strategies for a hybrid cloud, it's not just looking at the point solutions for archive, DR, or new services. It's about the persistent storage that you're going to need to have to move back and forth between these environments. So really moving sort of from like point use cases to a more all-encompassing plan for the environment. Exactly. Okay. Everybody's already seeing the benefits of cost, flexibility, and scalability, but I think we're just at the cusp of actually looking at how persistent storage can build in a hybrid cloud model. Okay. So what are some of the requirements that you would say for a hybrid cloud storage, uh, either product or strategy? Well, the first one we have to think about is it's got to be open. Right? It's got to be built on industry standards. Okay. We've had a bunch of de facto standards that have come out, and they've right. worked really, really well. But it has to also work with new flash. It's got to work with file, with block, with object. It's got to have a lot of multi-protocol right. kind so of So it's got to kind of do the new and the old, right? Very much so. And that brings us to something really important to me, anyway, which is multi-site. Okay. It's got to be aware. It's not enough to put in a single box someplace and have it work. You're taking advantage of moving things off-site, different geographies. Your point about the DR, not paying for that second building, right. all your storage and your storage strategy and control needs to know where the data is. And, and there also has to be some level of intelligence around that as far as when to move it to certain places too, right? And that intelligence we're seeing um, really get very, very important. At IBM, we think of that intelligence and awareness. We use the word cognitive. Okay. And we use the word cognitive for a very specific reason. It's not enough to just have policy. You have to have machine learning. Right, because, you know, frankly, I don't know if we have time to even set policy anymore. The data's coming in so fast, right? And the data, the policies that we used to have, mm -hmm. like, gosh, things that are old, move it here, or the certain level of granularity, mm -hmm. they're just not enough. Right. We have to have policies that are application aware, metadata aware, um, and actually extensible by the storage administrators and the application administrators. Yeah, and I think that, that uh, old data is, it's 
amazing how often old data comes back and has new purposes, right? And so you, you've got to manage it just in a different way nowadays. Absolutely, and if we think of these new services, mm -hmm. there's certain data that you want to leave in the cloud, but there's also certain data that you want to bring back in and be part of your customer profile or some of the other work you do. That's a policy, that's also cognitive. Right, now you guys have a, you don't solve this with just one product, you basically have a whole portfolio in this space, correct? We have probably the broadest portfolio of software-defined storage and integrated appliances and solutions that sit and are built upon that. We just announced um, Spectrum Virtualize for Block and for uh, on Storewise, all got upgraded to that. We have Spectrum Scale for File, we have Spectrum Accelerate for, for um, Pure Block, and all of them, and of course IBM Cloud Object Storage, mm -hmm. all of them are um, developing the tools to have a cognitive multi-site and open approach. That gives us sort of the framework for developing a hybrid cloud strategy that's open, uh, multi-site aware, can move uh, and, and be sort of transient in, in how it leverages the environment. And then I think this cognizant part is really important as the volume of data grows, we just can't manually manage things anymore, right? Absolutely, and we can't think of them as just doing it for just file or for block or for object. We have to look at the whole portfolio and have the, the elements of control and management to be able to do that. And IBM's approach to that is very, very strong. Okay. Well, Doug, thanks for joining us today. George, Appreciate it really that. was my pleasure. Thank you. So there you have it. A, a real good strategy for hybrid cloud storage is one that is going to be open, uh, multi-site aware and intelligent, and then cognitive, because we just have too much data to manage and try to manually set policies and procedures against. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Boom.